Hi friends, my name is Boris. My grandfather passed away last year. He was a very successful realtor. He specialized in expensive properties. That's how he kept building his fortune year after year. He became one of the richest people in the country. He was also known for being a curmudgeon. To the point that people avoided making eye contact with him. I rarely saw him smile. He was a good man, but he had a bad temper. He became even more intolerable after my grandmother died. He seemed to be trying to take out the pain of losing his wife of 50 years on people around him. My dad has two siblings, both brothers. They each have one kid, and they're also boys. So my grandfather has three sons and three grandsons. He bought four houses right next to each other. He lived in one of them, and his kids lived in the others. We lived in the house closest to my grandparents. The first thing I did every morning was to visit them. We always had breakfast together. We had a special connection. Unlike my grandfather, my grandmother was very affectionate. She always told me, Boris, you're a good kid. You're our favorite grandson. I want you to know this. Your grandfather doesn't talk about these things, but you can be sure that he feels the same way about you. <laughs> Unlike me, my cousins never went to visit them. Once, my older cousin Matt said, I've never met anyone more obnoxious than Grandpa. If I see him on the street on my way home, I go through the backyard just to avoid him. My other cousin Ben didn't like my grandfather either. He used to say that to his parents and me every chance he got. Even though my grandfather was incredibly wealthy, the only thing he did for his children was to give each of them a house. Other than that, he never gave his sons any money, but my dad never complained about this. He always told me, your grandfather wanted his kids to stand on their own feet. I'm grateful to him for that. He did the right thing. My cousins treated my getting along with my grandparents as a joke. They'd say, they always give us the same gifts for our birthdays. That's how we know your sucking up to our grandfather isn't working. <laughs> it used to bother me when they'd say stuff like that. But eventually, I realized they were just saying it because they were jealous of me. The prospect of my grandfather leaving me his fortune made them uncomfortable. In fact, they were afraid of it. Before long, my suspicions about my cousins were proven true. My grandfather was diagnosed with lung cancer. I was the first person he told this news. One morning, I went to visit him as I always did. He looked terrible. He obviously hadn't gotten any sleep that night. He showed me his lung x-rays. I'll soon be joining your grandmother. I should be feeling happy about that, but instead I'm afraid. Does this make me a bad husband? He asked. That day, I saw his human side for the first time. That surly old man we were used to was replaced with a nice old man who was afraid of dying. After they found out about my grandfather's illness, my cousin started visiting him all the time. Matt, who used to avoid him, started visiting him several times a day. At first, I thought they changed their attitude because they were sad about him being sick. But soon, their true intentions became clear. They wanted to get a piece of their grandfather's fortune. One evening, Ben called me. He said, we need to talk. When I got to the coffee shop where we were supposed to meet, Matt was there too. I was wondering what this was about. Matt jumped right in. Boris, has Grandpa drawn up his will yet? Do you know how he's going to divide the inheritance? I was shocked. It disturbed me so much that while he was struggling with cancer, my cousins were after his money. I have no idea. And I don't care, I said. In fact, I find it really odd that this is what you're thinking about right now. I don't think this is right, I went on. Ben said, of course you're not worried. You did everything you could to get along with Grandpa. And what about us? How are we going to get our money? I didn't like the way he was talking. What are you talking about? I love grandma and I love grandpa. That's why I always had a good relationship with them. Matt said, I'm really curious about what you could love about grandpa. You're not fooling us. We know what you're up to. Do you think we're stupid? Now this was too much. My grandfather is struggling with a terrible disease. I couldn't care less about the will or the inheritance. I just want him to live as long as possible. I don't care what you think. You only remind me of vultures, I said, and left. I wish I'd never seen their faces again after that day. Unfortunately, that wasn't possible. 
I visited my grandfather more often now because I wanted to spend more time with him. Every time I went over there, Matt or Ben were there. One would leave, and the other would show up. I can't even tell you how fake they were. Grandpa, I made coffee for you. Grandpa, I brought you a pillow so you will be comfortable. Grandpa, do you want to watch a movie? I was disgusted by them because I knew what they were up to. But I wasn't about to tell my grandfather any of this. It would be so unfair to burden him with something like this. In fact, my grandfather seemed happy with what was going on. It was weird, but he was always chatting with them. I guess he had softened up since he didn't have a lot of time left. My cousins were taking advantage of this change. They were naturally very happy that he was treating them well. They were now sure that he would include them in his will. And they had probably started making plans about what to do with the money that they would inherit. One morning, what I was fearing finally happened. I knocked on my grandfather's door. He didn't answer. I rang the bell for a long time, still nothing. I guess because I was expecting this, I knew right away that we'd lost him. The next day, my cousins were already talking about money. I was right behind them at the funeral. They didn't notice that I was there. Matt said, the lawyer just called my dad. He told the whole family to come to his office tomorrow. He's gonna read my grandfather's will. Ben giggled, saying, yes. We're going to be rich tomorrow. <laughs> I didn't want to go to the lawyer's office. I told this to my father that night. He put his hand on my shoulder and said, Your grandfather instructed his lawyer to read his will in front of the whole family. I think he donated all of his money to charity. Your uncles also think so. So tomorrow we'll all be there, just as a formality. I agreed mm -hmm. to go. Plus, it would be fun to see how upset my cousins would get once their dreams of getting rich got crushed. We were in the lawyer's office early next morning. Three sons, three daughters-in-law, and of course, three grandsons. Ben leaned towards me. He whispered, For years, you put up with Grandpa for nothing. See, we made it to the same level as you in just four months. I think he even liked us more than you. We'll find out in a minute. When the lawyer took out the will, I glanced towards Matt and Ben. They were giddy with excitement. <laughs> the lawyer began reading the document. My dear family, Right now, I'm with my beloved wife. I don't think you're going to miss an ill-tempered old man like me. I'm not going to take much of your time with this silly will business. I'll dive right in. You know, life has been very generous with me, and I have amassed a substantial fortune. My dear sons, I didn't let you live a rich man's life because I wanted you to stand on your own two feet. You understood me well, and you did everything on your own. I don't think you need any more money. Please continue in the same manner. I love you and my daughters-in-law very much. After the lawyer read all this, I saw my dad and my uncle smile. My older uncle said, Just as would be expected of dad. You didn't surprise us. We love you too. Our dear dad. Rest in peace. Meanwhile, Matt and Ben were holding their breath, waiting without a peep. The lawyer kept reading the will. After they found out about my illness... My dear grandsons Matt and Ben remembered that they actually had a grandfather. I have to admit that it was most entertaining to watch you falling all over me to get a slice of the inheritance. I guess you took me for a naive old man. I didn't say anything because I know I'm not easy to deal with. I see it as punishment enough for you to have acted like you liked me. The parents started laughing when they heard this. Matt's mom said, Look at these little devils. We weren't even aware of this. They've been after the inheritance. Matt and Ben turned bright red. Nonsense. We were taking care of Grandpa because he was sick. They started babbling unconvincingly. We're almost done. Let me finish, the lawyer said, and kept on reading. And finally, my dear grandson Boris. You've been close to your grandmother and me since the day you started walking. I know I didn't give you enough attention, but you're a good kid. I know you will forgive me for it. Even though I know you loved us without expecting anything in return, I still want to give you a present. When you turn 18, I want you to use half of my fortune to set up a foundation and run it. The foundation is to provide scholarships for poor children and make sure they get a good education. Mm -hmm. The other half of my fortune is yours. I only have one condition. You are not to give anything to Ben or Matt so that they learn their lesson. This was totally unexpected on my part. I was so proud that my grandfather trusted me with the responsibility of running such an organization, and I wouldn't have to work thanks to the money he left me, which meant I could dedicate all of my time to the foundation.
Needless to say, that day was a huge disappointment for my cousins. It took them a long time to get over it. Now they're both studying to get into college. My grandfather always said, You can't take an elevator up to success. You can only reach it by climbing the stairs step by step. Yes, you can't earn anything easily by taking a shortcut. My grandfather showed this to us in a very effective way. I remember him with gratitude and respect.